All right, what's up everybody? Uh, Tom Ism here. Uh, we've uh, been on a little bit of a hiatus uh, doing some of this and some of that, uh, lockdown and uh, all of that, but uh, we're back trying to make some videos uh, and get some content out on YouTube. Uh, you might notice that uh, while I'm also on Tom Ism, I'm also in four NFM uh, or November 4, November Foxtrot Mike. Uh, during the, uh, the the lockdown uh, and the hiatus on everything here, um, I uh, got the opportunity to uh, get my uh, image radio license and uh, have uh, been having a whole lot of fun with it. Uh, we've been climbing mountains and uh, activating uh, and, and uh, having a whole bunch of fun with summits on the air and all kinds of stuff that we're going to be talking about on the channel soon. So uh, this video is going to be the first of uh, you know maybe that series. Uh, I uh, have a uh, opportunity to uh, work with a uh, another local ham named Brian uh, K4 BBL or Kilo 4 Bravo Bravo Lima in phonetic. Uh, and uh, we uh, took a couple low power radios out into a park and uh, just had some fun. But uh, anyway, I just uh, wanted to uh, give a little quick intro uh, before we started the video. So anyway, let's get it going. That's what we're doing. All right, what's up guys? Uh, Tom Ism here. Uh, we're, uh, we're out in the woods. Get myself in frame. There we go. Uh, we're out in the woods. Uh, I'm, here, uh, I'm here with Brian. Uh, back in the background there. There he is. Hey, Brian. Um, I'll uh, put a link to his channel down in, uh, in the description. Uh, he's got a great ham radio channel. Is uh, somebody who really inspired me to uh, get off my butt and get tested and uh, get my licenses. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of antenna systems, um, a couple of rigs that we've got, and uh, we're just kind of out in the park uh, on a Sunday. Hopefully uh, not getting rained on because I took the tarp out of my bag, and uh, hopefully uh, we're going to have us a fun day here. So uh, like uh, the shirt says, uh, getting my freak on, uh, let's, uh, let's do it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you some antennas and uh, we're going to get on the air and uh, try some QRP and some 20 watts and uh, see who we can talk to. So that's what we're doing. Um, we've got a couple of QRP radios. we got the G90. Um, we got a whole bunch of other gear, um, a whole bunch of mess. Uh, we've got a mag loop antenna over here we're going to talk about in a little while. Uh, we've got the super antenna MP1C that we've talked about. We're going to get everything set up. Uh, we're going to get some power into these rigs and start going. All right, so uh, what we're looking at here on the tripod, we'll kind of scroll up and... Uh, See, we've got a, uh, a vertical antenna. Uh, let's see if we can see here. We see the MP1C. This is the super antenna MP1C uh, with a titanium whip. Um, this, uh, this antenna in its current configuration is capable of 40 through 10 meters. Although, somewhere, my bag, um, we, uh, we can also add this uh, 80 meter coil to it and extend our capabilities for 80 meters. Um, and even if you want to, you can add an additional coil on the top. It'll give you 2 meters and 440. So if, um, if you've got a rig in the box uh, or just an HT and uh, something portable you're going out, uh, you know, portable or uh, mountain topping with, um, great antenna system, especially if you don't have any trees. Um, all you need is a tripod. Um, we've got some radials here. Um, the, uh, the radial systems are actually kind of cool. Uh, they ship you uh, radials for each of the bands. And uh, the, the way it works is it's one wire or it's, it's one set of wires uh, that are in four different links uh, for the four different bands that it covers. Um, I use two sets of radials. Um, plus you know one in here and get in focus one in here and one in here uh, use two sets of radials uh, and that really helps the antennas performance a lot so I'd recommend uh, if you're if you're going to get this rig uh, go ahead and get the second set of radials uh, or you can just make them yourself it's just wire uh, in a clip so I mean if that's you know what five bucks uh, from uh, from Home Depot so you can make it yourself as well uh, which a lot of us in the business do so uh, that's what we're doing all right, so here's our second antenna system, and there's a couple of ways. What you're seeing now is a fiberglass mast. Uh, this is from Soda Beams. Uh, you can check SodaBeams.com. They're a company out in the UK, um, and they, they really sell uh, and make things for portable operators. Um, I'm pretty sure maybe we can zoom in here a bit. I don't have my long lens on in focus. Yep, bad video operator, um, but uh, there we go. don't think you can see it, but up there at the top of the tree, uh, we've got a mast and uh that's uh that's holding our antenna system uh which is a dipole it's a uh it's a modular dipole um we'll do some video of that whenever it comes down because as i scroll around here i guarantee you cannot see uh anything uh, <laughs> the antenna is super thin but it can handle 100 watts uh, and the beauty of it is uh, Soda Beams makes a couple of versions. Um, the one we have here is the 20 meter and 40 meter version and I might be able to walk over and uh, see here in the sky you can see there's uh, alligator clips up there uh, on the wire right there and that's how you change between bands. 
So they make several of those antennas. Uh, the one that we've got today is uh, for 20 and 40 meters, but you can get them for, for 80, 40, uh, 30, 17, 10 meters. Uh, they, they make, it's just the, the wire gets longer, but it's the same concept. Uh, it's all just connected with alligator clips. The whole system is super light. Um, it all comes with wire winders and uh, fits into, into a bag. It's maybe two pounds. Um, and uh, you, can, uh, you can guide the whole system. Um, I cheat and use trees, uh, but you can guide the system out in an open field too. So, uh, you know, it's excellent for parks on the air, excellent for summits on the air, or just getting in your backyard and, uh, and playing with some rigs. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, so, woo, good thing I got bug spray. Uh, so, um, something, uh, something that's new to me as far as uh, the portable uh, kind of QRP uh, small antennas uh, is the mag loop. And uh, Brian's brought one with him today, so uh, we're going to kind of turn it over to him and uh, let him explain it to us. Hi, right, Brian. This is the Cha F loop. It's by Chameleon, and it's a mag loop antenna. So, it works on the magnetic side of the RF. Um, of the electromagnetic waves that are created by radios. This picks up, is your receive portion, it's just coax, this is a coupler, this, this acts as your transmit, and CHA brings everything. You can break this down, this is just a small tripod, breaks down into a very small bag, very portable. It's only rated for 25 watts, so if you're running a more powerful rig, okay. uh, this isn't the, the, the antenna system for you, but as far as QRP portable, it's small, easy to pack, easy to set up, and uh, it works. I've made contacts uh, on three or four different continents with this. Nice. In, in all the bands, you go through several different bands, right? Your frequency coverage. Yeah, from 5 megahertz to 29.6. Yeah, which is awesome. I mean, it's, it's, it's as small as it is, um, you know, 25 watts um, limitation if you're trying to take a 7300 or something like that out with you, but most rigs are going to run, you know, 5, 10, 20 watts max, so great antenna, uh, especially uh, talking about that uh, ICOM IC705, uh, 10 watts max out, um, great solution. Uh, you know, that plus the IC705, I can fit that in the grocery bag. I don't even need a backpack. <laughs> Exactly. The, the one downside to this is the, is the bandwidth is very narrow. The, the tunable space is very, very narrow. So uh, whenever you set up on a new frequency, you've got to retune the resistor of this radio by turning this dial. And it's very, very touchy. So very narrow, tuned, resonant frequency uh, with, with the magnetic loops. But, uh, you know, it's fairly easy to set up, tune it up, and be ready to go. I really don't even use the internal automatic tuner uh, with with my Zygu X5105. I just tune the antenna to make it resonant. I check the SWR on my radio and I'm good to go. Well, yeah, and that gives you the maximum. All the five watts of that are getting out if you're resonant. You're getting all your power out, not reflecting anything back. So you can, you're can really not wasting anything. Good point, Tom. All right, awesome. Thanks, Brian. All right, lighting. Uh, it's been a while since old Tomism shot a video here, so uh, <laughs> we just found the autofocus boat, and so uh, anything previously not in focus, uh, we uh, can give uh, preemptive apologies there. All right, so, uh, so I'm sitting here with uh, the two QRP rigs, uh, or really this one's uh, kind of QRP and a little bit over. Uh, it'll do 20 watts, uh, the Zygu G90. Um, just um, kind of, you know, my thought process, um, whenever I was looking at both of these radios, um, the, the, the X5105 um, has a lot of great features, does a lot of great things. Um, learned a lot about it actually uh, from one of Brian's videos, um, some great info there. And so I, I, I started to search Zygu, and when I did, um, I found they had another rig out there um, the G90 and the G90 is a little bit different. Um, it's uh, it's an SDR, so it's got a very small display. I think it's like a 2.4 you know, inch TFT or something like that. It's a really small display. Uh, the buttons are kind of compact uh, and everything, but it's a real solid rig. And the reason I went with it is um, you know a little bit newer uh, in some of the features that it's got. Um, it's got an SWR meter, and so does the 5105. Um, they both have uh, internal tuners. Um, I honestly I went with the um, with with the G90 uh, because it's a little bit more rugged. Um, you know I like the height. And, and get up on mountains so it's got built-in rails uh, it's 
you know, I bang on it, it's solid. The speaker on it is just insane. Um, you know, I, I light the parks up whenever I'm out there with it. Um, and really, honestly, um, it, it's the 20 watts um, th that I went with this rig. Uh, it wasn't really the price difference. They're priced roughly the same. Um, you know, the color screen with the waterfall is nice, but when you're QRP, the waterfall really only tells you where you're not supposed to be, not where you can be. Um, so uh, it's, it's really the 20 watts that I, uh, I went with this rig. Uh, other, other than that, they pretty much have the same features uh, and do the same things. Um, but compared to just a five watt output, um, wanted to be able to, to, to juice that up a little bit and run 10 or 20, um, you know, just to get that signal out a little bit stronger. So, so honestly, that's why I went with this rig. Um, you know, it's very strong. Uh, you know, I, I throw it in my backpack and don't have any worries about it uh, whenever I get where I'm going. I know it's going to be, you know, solid and, uh, and ready to go. So um, you know, that's pretty much the only reason that I chose the G90 over the 5105. Although I'll be honest, uh, there have been several times uh, I've been out there, you know, by now and almost clicked that button on that 5105 too, because uh, I'd, I'd love to have it as well. The internal battery is nice. Um, you'd have to have an external battery with this one, so that's extra weight. Um, so, you know, it's kind of a bit of a trade-off. You want more power, you got to have some more juice. You got to have more battery. Um, but um, we, we, we still may see a, uh, a 5105 uh, in the inventory. Uh, really, we're waiting on the uh, the ICOM 705, uh, the, the beautiful new rig that uh, the ICOMs come out with. Um, it's, uh, you know, all the way down from uh, from 160 all the way up to 440. It uh, does all the bands. Uh, it's a true shack in the box. Uh, it'll do five watts off of the same battery um, that the uh, that their, their current handhelds, uh, like the ICOM uh, like ID51, I think. Uh, it runs the same battery. Uh, like 3,800 milliamp hours, uh, and it'll do that on five watts. Uh, and if you plug in external 12 volt DC, it'll go up to 10 watt. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to kind of explain a little bit about the rigs uh, and uh, why I chose the one I did. When I was shopping for my Zygu uh, X5105, my budget QRP rig, I took a bunch of stuff into consideration and I certainly considered uh, the G90 from Zygu as well. And what it boiled down to me was really uh, the internal battery on this outweighed the 20 watts of that. There is a difference between 5 watts and 20 watts. It's not 4X, but there is a difference. It can help you get through that pile up or get out a little bit further, uh, make that contact uh, you know, to Europe a little bit easier than you could with 5 watts. But having this all in one unit with the microphone and battery built in, to me that was just slightly more valuable than the extra 15 watts. This radio is nice, it's a little bit heavier, and you have to carry a battery power source for it. So that extra weight was also kind of uh, definitely a consideration of why I didn't choose a G90. This is a perfectly good rig. I would like to have 20 watts in this form factor, this size with a built-in battery, but it's just not there. We'll wait for the, uh, we'll wait for the IC705. Uh, but here's, uh, here's the G90. Um, set up on a uh, very professionally built uh, branch uh, to hold it up. Um, one of the things uh, I was just realizing here about the G90 versus the X5105 is it, it has feet and can stand up. Uh, this radio cannot. Uh, so uh, there, there's something else. Uh, you can see uh, the screen here is, uh, is pretty small, but there's a lot of information going on on the screen. Let me get that back in focus. We actually have an SWR meter. Let's go ahead and uh, hit that and you can see that the antenna we're on right now is wonderfully flat across 40 meters. Uh, just a great SWR. So we're not even using uh, the internal ATU. Uh, we're just running completely, uh, you know, just, just, just transmitting out of the radio. Did just make a contact, uh, which unfortunately I did not put on tape. So uh, we're gonna do a little bit more of that and, um, you know, get Brian involved too. So anyway, that's what we're doing. So here's the X5105 on 20 meters and uh, you're running off of the, uh, the super antenna, right? The MP1C yep. currently. So uh, we're on uh, two meters here. Um, great sounding signal and um, I think you said we've got an Austrian station here? Yeah, or? it's Austrian. So yeah, I mean just uh, you can see uh, the signal strength is great, radio sounds great and like I just mentioned about my radio, it has feet and stands up so you don't have to put a stick or a rock under it, um, which a uh, great little pop out feature, you know, those are great things. So uh, so anyway, here's the X5105 running and uh, sounding great, uh, you know, off of these little portable antennas that we got with us. November 4, November Foxtrot, Mexico, low power. We got it. Roger, Roger. Copy the 5-4 uh, into your park. I got your park ID. That's uh, Pennsylvania. That is a 574.2 mile contact, 20 watts off of the battery here in a park from a wire in a tree. 
November 4, November, Foxtrot Mike, low power. November 4, November 5. Yeah. Roger, roger, the 5.9. Uh, you are also 5.9 into uh, into Georgia. Uh, we are battery-powered portable, uh, operating from a park, shooting a YouTube video. Roger, roger. Okay, roger, roger. Uh, got your solid 5.9 here coming in. Uh, your station, uh, Michigan. Absolutely. Thanks for being there. Thanks for activating, and uh, thanks for picking us up. Uh, doing, uh, doing a great job off of some speaker wire up in a tree. Yep, roger that, roger that. 7-3, uh, and I uh, hope you uh, get a lot more contacts. Uh, enjoy the nice day out there. Thank you, 7-3. Go ahead. Kilo 4, Bravo Bravo Lima, QRP. Kilo 4, Zulu, X-ray. Ah, I thought that was it. I thought that was me. Go ahead, this is Whiskey 8, Alpha, Papa Sierra, activating park from here. Kilo 3321. Kilo 4, Bravo Bravo Lima, QRP. Uh, mobile. Oh, mobile. Mobile. Yeah. Hey, good luck with the QRP. You are sounding good. Keep it up. 73. 7-3. There it is. QRP, baby. All right, so uh, you just heard Brian there uh, kind of wrapping up. Uh, made a QRP contact on 5 watts uh, up to Michigan. Uh, took a little while to get there, so um, he was running uh, on the mag loop. Um, I'm running on the dipole. Let's see if I can't get the same station and uh, how, uh, how, how easy or not it is. November 4, November Foxtrot Mike, low power. November 4, November First Foxtrot boom. Mike, thank you for the contact in 73. Absolutely, it's beautiful here as well. 7-3, uh, stay safe and thanks for being out there activating. Hey, you too, 73. So, yeah, that was great. First try. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and smile about that and, uh, and just move on. Uh, that little bit of extra power uh, and uh, using the non-compromised antenna, way to go. That's what I'm saying. So, anyway... We're gonna keep playing some radio. It's a fun day. All right, so guys, uh, we've uh, we got it all packed up. Uh, we're done getting our freak on for the day. Um, made uh, a few contacts. Uh, we got one out on five watts uh, on the X5105. Uh, uh, I uh, got a couple out on 20 watts, uh, just with some, you know, cr yeah, five contacts there. Just with some antennas up in a tree, uh, using a mag loop, uh, just kind of testing things out. We used the coil-loaded vertical uh, you know, super antenna. Uh, I want to thank Brian, um, K4BBL, uh, for being here in the video. Uh, really appreciate your channel. Uh, really learned a lot from it. So uh, really appreciate the, uh, the fact that we're close enough that we can do a collaboration so uh all right guys um that's what we're doing we're out of here it was a lot of fun thanks tom yeah thank you